Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Experian Boost. You can boost your FICO score for free at Experian.com slash inside. Hey everyone, and welcome to Inside Gaming Daily for Wednesday. Yeah, that's right, it's Wednesday, Mario Kart. Oh, there uh, Mario Kart. Uh, vroom, vroom, vroom. The much anticipated mobile Mario Kart game is out on beta for some lucky Android users in the US. Are you one of those? No. Ooh, but how does the game translate to your phone? Thanks to some leaks, we've been getting some sneak peeks at how Mario Kart Tour looks and controls. Yeah, we've also got some info on its microtransactions. Yeah, boy. It's got a lot of them, right, Brian? Oh yeah, the people are already complaining about rare characters being locked behind gotcha style mechanics. So there's a lot to talk about this episode. Oh, do they have Monty Mole? Is he a cannon racer? I don't know about that. They Damn must. right he is. They He's must. blind. It's not good. Yeah, so despite Nintendo's past promises to not overly monetize games, this one's looking extremely, literally, directly pay to win. That's like pay for the chance to win. Yeah. Uh, if you've ever played a Mario Kart game, the visuals in mobile version will look very familiar. Yeah, it's a kart running down the track. Yeah. Wow. But the controls are quite different. It's similar to an auto runner. Your kart will go straight even if you do nothing. So it's just full gas all the time. If steering is your thing, you just drag your finger to the left or the right and that'll turn your kart. That's cool. And the farther away you drag, the harder you turn. There's also drifting, like in the regular games, which you can pull off by turning aggressively. Yeah, there are item blocks, shells, stars, mushrooms, every good old thing. Just a regular old Mario Kart, right? Yeah. Right, Brian? Not so fast. Oh. Not so fast, because judging by the beta, it looks like Nintendo is going to monetize the hell out of this game. First up, they've got a premium currency in the form of green gems, which are definitely not canon. Those are used in a gotcha system where you can roll for new drivers, carts, or gliders. What do you mean roll? What the f are you talking about? You know, you just roll. You, you put your gems in and a pipe spits out a new driver for you. I don't like that. Does it make the little pipey sound? Oh, you know it does. Something to tingle that pleasure center. Considering the many, many combinations of drivers, carts, and gliders in Mario Kart, there's lots and lots and lots of things to roll for, pay money to unlock. Oh, You're gonna need a mountain of green gems to get that uh, Metal oh. Luigi or whatever. There's already an in-game shop that's advertising Metal Mario for sale. Although, since this is a beta, can't buy gems yet. Oh, but don't worry, you'll be able yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have Iggy Koopa? Yes. Cool. So yeah, you're gonna have to wait a few more weeks to give Nintendo all your money, but start saving now because you're gonna need a lot of it if you wanna win online against some three-year-old who stole his mom's credit card. Uh, Brian, here's the problem. All drivers and carts are not created equal in Mario Kart Tour, correct? No, and they never have been. If you're a Mario Kart expert like myself, you know that they've got small, medium, and large drivers, and the carts and the bikes are all very different in terms of stats, but there are some major, major differences in the mobile game. It looks like different drivers and carts will have different bonuses even depending on what course that you're on. It's gonna be course dependent too. Oh, oh man, no. I don't no. Like any of this. That means that if you want to be good at everything, you just have to unlock every driver so you have the corresponding driver to whatever bonus of the course you're racing on. Correct. Mother it's very insidious, yeah. As Kotaku noted in the Calamari Desert level, Morton gets three item slots instead of one, and his cart gives him mushroom boost to start the race, and every time he smashes an item block on that course, he gets three items instead of just one. Morton overpowered, I'm saying it right now. So yeah, it's sounds pretty directly like pay to win, but even worse, like pay for Way the chance worse. to get something fundamentally better. Worse. And some of the drivers are rated rare, including Luigi. What? The one rare? character we've never seen in any Mario game. <laughs> what are you talking about, Mario's brother? Yeah. Very rare Mario brother. <laughs> that's a, that's a rare Luigi right there. And while some of their bonuses vary depending on the course, Kotaku noted that drivers like Metal Mario have better bonuses on average across most courses. Interestingly, Nintendo also showed you the odds of getting different items, which is now required by law in some countries. You get ultra rare drivers like Dry Bowser, King Boo, and Rosalina, your chances are 0.3367%. 0 0.3. Yeah, one out of every 300 capsules might be one of those characters. Cool. Same with cards like the Bruiser, Blue 7, and the Bumble 5. Those all suck. Flame Rider and Cyber Slick tires. That's all you need. <laughs> As for ultra rare gliders like the Swooper and the Cloud Glider, your odds are a tiny bit better. 0.501%. You basically already have it. As soon as you download and install that app, bang, here's your Cloud Glider. Are you joking me? So I have to buy, that's less than one out of 100. Yeah. Is this pay to win? What is this? This is pay to, I don't know, spend all your college money on this shit. It's It's insane. It's not even, like you said, it's not pay to win, it's pay for the chance to win. The very, very small chance to win. It's insane. Yes. Well, I mean, it's not insane because it's been done before and you're it right. works. Yeah, right. So yeah, on that note, it seems pretty clear that Mario Kart Tour is going for a mechanic like FIFA Ultimate Team, where there's some ultra rare characters, or carts, yeah. gliders, whatever, but the best stats that you'll have to pay a lot of money for, for the chance of unlocking. And then if you play against somebody who has all that stuff unlocked, you're just at a fun 
fundamental disadvantage and you're probably going to lose. And FIFA Ultimate Team has made billions of dollars for yes. EA. Yes, yes And it people has. keep doing it. Uh, yeah. There's even more currency. The game also has gold coins that you can oh. earn through racing to buy things from an in-game store. Those aren't purchasable with real money, but you can use gems, which you can buy with real money, to play a special coin rush mode where you're showered with them. Just give them to me. All over my face. It's a golden shower. Yeah, it will. literally is a golden yeah. shower. So it's pretty clear here, the more real money you spend, the more chances you have to get currency along with better racers and carts. To be clear here, this is a beta okay. and things could change, but you can see where things are going. I, really, uh, I mean, I hope it changes. It's honestly not uncommon for monetization hooks and stuff like that to be decided right up until the end of launch. That's true, you're right. It is possible Nintendo's seeding us out there to see how people react to it, and they might course correct <laughs> as it goes. But it's no surprise why Nintendo's doing this, because these mechanics make an ass load of money. Brian, do players love these things? No, they don't love them, Bruce, but they've historically shown a willingness to tolerate such mechanics in free-to-play mobile games as opposed to a $60 game. That's when you, you get a lot more pushback online, but mobile players have weak wills and no morals, so they pay out the ass for this kind of stuff. <laughs> Brian feels very strongly about Mario Kart. Yeah, for its part, and to its credit, Nintendo has tried to resist all of this in the past. You may remember that its very first mobile game, Super Mario Run, even had a business model that was completely different. Pay $10 up front, and you just get the whole game. Oh, okay. It's like a weird game. And you get to play a little part of it for free. It was neat. But Super Mario Run didn't make a lot of money. Not at all. In the last quarter, it accounted for just 3% of Nintendo's overall revenue, grossing $2.3 million. Overall mobile revenue. Oh, sorry. $2.3 million, which is, which is not good at all. Meanwhile, Fire Emblem Heroes, which is full of the gotcha mobile goodness, made more than $46 million in the quarter. Yeah, so it's clear that microtransactions are where the money's at. There's a reason people do them, and it's not because they hate video games and they hate you. Turn a four-year-old upside down and shake them out until all the coins fall out. But Nintendo has also said in recent months that it's going to tone down microtransactions in its games, right, Brian? Yeah, the Wall Street Journal reported, uh, this is just a couple months ago, that Nintendo sees the mobile games as ways to just promote its brand and characters, and they don't want to be criticized for being too greedy. They're nice guy. They're the nice developer. They don't want to nickel and dime you to death. They make billions of dollars. Whatever. Uh, as Mario Kart Tour has shown, though, Nintendo isn't willing to give up microtransactions, despite all that high-minded rhetoric we heard from them. There's been some other movements going around, too. It's even planning to shut down Animal Crossing Pocket Camp and Fire Emblem Heroes in Belgium because loot boxes. Right, they're illegal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eurogamer reported that the games were being pulled over the current unclear situation in Belgium regarding certain in-game revenue models. I mean, what? they're illegal and yeah. you can't do it. What a wild situation where loot boxes are so fundamentally ingrained into a game's development and Shut mechanics, down. you can't take them out. <laughs> it ceases to be a game. So anyway, <laughs> Nintendo still wants to be greedy. They're a company. They have yeah, to make yeah, money. Course, yeah. They just don't want to be criticized for being greedy. No, they're allowed to be, they're allowed to be criticized as well. I mean, Nintendo has always had a keen mind for how they're perceived and what their brand value is. They've been impeccably good at maintaining that. So it makes sense that they're dabbling in this kind of thing. They got to tread on pretty thin ice. Brian, I know you don't like microtransactions, but Nintendo stands to make an ass load of money with Mario Kart Tour, right? Well, yeah, because Mario Kart, it's sneakily one of the all time best sellers for Nintendo. Yeah, that might not be the first game that comes to mind, but it was the best selling game on the Switch, best selling game on the Wii U, best selling game on the Wii, if you take out Wii Sports, and I do because that game doesn't count. It was even the second best seller on the GameCube. Uh, it just got barely edged out by uh, Melee. It's the same story for the 3DS. Mario Kart 7 for the 3DS sold more than 18 million copies, making it the top selling game on that platform too, ahead of both Pokemon X and Y and Pokemon Sun and Moon. That's huge that it'd be Pokemon. Yes, yeah. twice yeah, yeah. over. So yeah, you might not think of Mario Kart as being the best selling Nintendo franchise, but it is. Yeah, it absolutely, it absolutely is. is. That's why Mario Kart Tour is kind of a huge deal. Investors are orgasmic. Oh. They cannot wait to make more money from Mario Kart Tour. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's the sound of him smacking a kid on the back so all of his lunch money falls out. Investors have estimated that Mario Kart Tour could earn as much as one billion dollars. A billion dollars. To put that into perspective, Nintendo made nine billion dollars in revenue in 2017. One ninth of its revenue could become Mario Kart Tour. So if Mario Kart Tour makes a billion dollars, that would be a massive new source of revenue for Nintendo, and it's not gonna make a billion dollars through $10 upfront payments. Here's the interesting part, and this is where it kind of gets a little more spooky. Mario Kart Tour may be cause for concern beyond just fighting the dreaded specter of pay to win in this instance alone. If Nintendo reaps the aforementioned ass loads of money on this project, they're certainly gonna face pressure from investors to repeat that performance with other properties in mobile. And while they publicly stated they want to avoid criticism for overly monetizing their games, the need to earn those coins for investors may win out in the end, and we could see more aggressive monetization creep into their console games too. No, don't say no. that. I don't want to say it. Brian, how dare you? Credit where credit's due here. Nintendo's been honorable about separating church and state so far. So if you pay for a Switch game, you usually get a full game without any DLC hooks. That's always been a good spot in Nintendo. And uh, mm -hmm. the games that do have them, Mario Kart 8 and Smash Brothers, for example, are straightforward, fairly priced. It all kind of makes sense. Get a new stage, 
get new characters, new music, no, yeah, five normal. bucks, normal, normal stuff. stuff. Normal stuff. So we'll see. Hopefully Mario Kart Tour isn't so successful that it completely changes the way Nintendo does business. Then again, Nintendo's such a weird and obstinate company that they probably wouldn't be moved by investor pressure either way. They just go to them and say, investors, we're sorry. That was a nice year, but don't expect it again. They've done that before, which is pretty great. What else is coming up for Nintendo besides this one billion microtransaction Mario Kart Tour? Oh, they've got another money-making bombshell waiting in the wings this year, of course, Pokemon Sword and Shield. So this one's Pokemon meets Downton Abbey. So that's gonna make a lot of money too. So this is kind of an interesting prospect. A good guy Nintendo releases a pay to win cash cow and a traditional Pokemon in the same year, just so they can go to investors and say that both products are still viable revenue drivers. Yeah, that makes sense. They're like the Severus Snape of gaming. <laughs> it just looks like they're turning evil, but they're actually protecting you this whole time. What? Uh, Nintendo Snape wants to f my mom? Well, yeah. I guess I don't have to read Harry Potter now. Right, have you not read Harry Potter? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> Nintendo's more like the creepy incel. It's still bitter your mom turned him down two decades ago. That's uh, like, that's more like Snape. That's a cut in that's there. A, that's a Snape. I'm ruining it for, no, there was a big reveal, Brian. I just ruined it for you, buddy. That's all right. I'll live. <laughs> Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Experian Boost. Let me tell you guys, here we here at Inside Gaming care about scores. The higher scores, the better. The living life the Inside Gaming way is being at the top of every scoreboard, and credit is no exception. Experian Boost can help you climb those ranks though. You wanna put in your initials at the top of that scoreboard, get a nice low interest loan on your car or your house or whatever, maybe not have to put a down payment on a cell phone. Experian Boost can help you do that. How, you ask? Well, for the first time ever, uh, they will actually use your utility payments to credit your credit score. So this is your cell phone, your utilities, all that stuff. Experience will actually take your, your good payment history and use that to boost your credit score. So if you've been paying your bills, you should get credit for that, uh, literally and figuratively, with Experian Boost. Uh, you can do it now for free at experian.com slash inside. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N dot com slash inside. Thank you, Experian Boost, for the sponsorship and fix your credit the inside gaming way. Get, get your score higher with Experian Boost. So once more, that's experienboost.com slash inside. Thank you for the sponsorship. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the top of the high scoreboard. Absolutely. As for the level building tools, Nintendo has added a lot more building options in the game, right? Yeah. The angry sun's back. Oh, what? Oh, that sun. Jeez. Remember you pick up the key and he oh, chases yeah. you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, no, that was the mask. The angry sun. I know what you're talking about. We, yeah. we got you, don't worry. You're, yeah. You had the Doki Doki Panic. Was Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Ooh, that almost embarrassed myself. There's a variety of themes you can pick, including 